What's up, everyone, and welcome to another live stream from Gizmo Slip Tech. Today, we're talking about how I ranked the 2023 gaming laptops, and I just want to explain the system that I used for ranking them. So that's the goal of today's live stream. Um, it's not going to be too long. I'm going to keep this short and brief today because I do have a dinner with my parents. So we're going to go to. So let's dive right into it, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and get it pulled up. So right now we have the ranking system here pulled up. Let's pop over to it. Now, <clears throat> the first thing you'll notice is I have an explanation up here on the top left. Right now, I recommend using Listium with a desktop browser because the mobile browsers may not be updating all of the data because of the caching right now. Listium support is trying to figure out what's going on. now. Um, so that's it. Use the use it with a desktop for right now. Another big important thing that you should know is that the first RTX 4090 laptop is available for order over on Amazon, and it is the Aorus 17X. So I've got a link to it here on the sheet. You can go ahead and pop over here and potentially buy it. It's 38.99 for an i9 13900 13900HX with an RTX 4090 and QHD 240Hz display. Looks like a pretty decent deal. I don't know, we'll have to see how the other pricings for most of the other laptops go, but I bet you it's gonna be a lot more um, for other laptop manufacturers like Razer or Asus and Alienware for the same specs, but we'll have to see. So um, I went ahead and created a, a, billet, a way for us to um, have consistency and some transparency for the rating system, and I'm going to pull up this system here. All right, so um, we're gonna go ahead and just make this full screen if I can. And well, we're gonna make this full screen too. All right, so bear with me while I get this figured out. Gonna make it smaller. Adjusting the size, perfect. All right, so the first thing that you should know is, uh, so let's just start here from the rating system because um, I'll probably put this video at the top of this list right here. Um, on the top of this list, I'll put this, uh, replace this all 2023 gaming laptops video so that way people can easily figure out how these rating system works for right now. So, laptop rating combined. So this is the first and most important category. It combines the score from all of the different ratings into one cohesive score that gives you an overall idea of the laptop. Now, the thing about this, uh, the thing about the co laptop combined rating is that it is, I gotta put it right here, there we go, all right. Um, so this laptop combined rating this is a three times weighted for thermal design and two times weighted for display quality. So, and all the other categories count for one X because I think thermal design is the most important aspect of a gaming laptop with display, how the, you, the user visually interacts with the, dis, the laptop as the second most important aspect of a laptop, at least when you're going to purchase one. Now, there's obviously lots of important categories, especially build quality is another very important one. But uh, the first two, being thermal design and display quality having two times more weight is very important for you to understand about the rating system. Now, the next, so just explaining how the thermal design scoring works. Here we go. All right, so um, this is all gonna be a work in progress and it's gonna be continuously adapted and as we get actual benchmarks, I'm going to try to, um, basically base the thermal design rating on actual game, game performance. And I'm gonna divide this up into like CPU performance and gaming performance. Um, and then probably also a temperatures uh, for the chassis as well. So the, this, this thermal design will be broken into three separate categories. That's kind of why it has a three times weight as well right now. So based on the GPU TDP, that's a heavy factor in this rating system. And then we also have the, the TDP assigned to the CPU as best we can know it based on what the manufacturer has claimed. 
But more importantly, as we get tests in, we'll actually have to test this and see what the real numbers, hard numbers are, um, especially with like max performance fans. Um, and then the other thing is, what are the temperatures when you're pulling these kinds of wattages? So, so you're gonna get, um, so in the end, on the sheet, the goal is to have a temperature rating for these high wattages, what the actual wattages are, and then we're gonna base the thermal design score on all of this data. Um, and we're gonna break it out into multiple categories, CPU, GPU performance, and temperatures. So, but, the, but for right now, the way the score is based on is based on the total TDP from the CPU and GPU claimed combined, uh, combined CPU, GPU, TDP, as claimed by the manufacturer or as best we can guess based on the heat pipe design. Now, thinner and lighter weight laptops also have an exception here. All right, so just because the Zephyrus G14 can only go up to 125 watts maximum on the GPU doesn't mean that it's not an excellently thermally designed laptop. It's just, it's like the most powerful 14 inch laptop you can get, but it's not gonna be the maximum TDP. So I still gave that a 100% on thermal design rating for those reasons, uh, so just know that it, when it comes to thinner and lighter laptops, it, I'm rating those ones primarily on how much TDP those laptops have versus the competition. So like the Stealth 14 doesn't have as much T, uh, TDP as the Z, Zephyrus G14, so its thermal rating is lower. Now, the display. The way the display works is we have a base percentage based on the raw stats of the resolution and the color gamut and the refresh rate. And then from there, we also add bonuses for 16 by 10 aspect ratio, it adds a plus 5% to the score. And if it's a 4K 144 Hertz, it adds two and a half percent to the score. So for example, the uh, MSI GT77 is a 4K 144 Hertz, so it is a base score of 95%. Um, but I'm also giving it two and a half percent bonus because of the 4K 144 aspect, uh, but it doesn't get the 16 by 10 aspect ratio score bonus. So it gets a 97.5. And then the 16 by 10 thousand nits brightness displays are gonna be getting the 100% score rating. Um, but you can see how this is all broken down and I'm gonna make a separate webpage to show you these numbers. And again, this is all gonna be tweaked here and there. There might be some typos and some, um, errors here, but we're gonna try to make the system as consistent as I can for all manufacturers, so that way the rating system is very easy to understand and break down. Even if you just see the number, you'd be like, oh, that's that's this minimum level of display. Or when you're going to buy, you're gonna like, I want a display with 75% or higher, because that means it's QHD, for example. Now for build quality, um, for build quality, we're doing 100% for unibody all metal chassis with a good hinge design. Um, I'm just docking companies that for laptops that don't have a metal body. And then up to 40% reduction in build quality based on flex in the chassis. So the more flex in the chassis, I'm taking maybe 10, 20, 30, or if it's really bad, 40% off of the build quality up to minus 50% for poor hinge design. That's really hard to know, but some laptops you can kind of tell this is probably not a great hinge design. It's probably gonna break eventually. Um, up to 15% plus for looks and functionality of the chassis. So for example, the Zephyrus Duo has a secondary screen that comes up to increase airflow. That is what that's talking about. So um, we're gonna try to to incorporate these different aspects of laptop design into the build quality. So it's this is actually build and design quality. And then we're also deducting some points for really heavy laptops, either 10 or 20%, depending on how much the laptop weighs. Bang for the buck is a category where I'm estimating uh, the value that the laptop costs, so how much it costs versus how much performance and features you're getting with the laptop. And this is very subjective to me given my experience in the laptop market and the past generations of laptops um, and how brands have historically priced the laptops because we don't have the pricing on all the laptops. But this number is going to go up and down a lot in the future here as we get all the prices coming in. Like we just got the new Aura 17X price today and we're gonna get more and more pricing as we go along here. Premium features is going to be a combination of speakers, 
high quality 1080p or higher webcam, Windows Hello, a MUX switch, Advanced Optimus, G-Sync or FreeSync support. So all of those things. Oh, and also RGB lighting. So all of those things can be up to 10% off for RGB, for poor RGB lighting. All right, so um, the big thing here, a lot of laptops this year have Windows Hello, but some of them do not. And a lot of them have G-Sync and Advanced Optimus, but some do not. Um, pretty much every laptop this year has a MUX, so I don't think that applies to any of them. For almost, there might be a few that do, uh, that don't have a MUX, but uh, for the most part, this is gonna be where you're gonna find the G-Sync or Advanced Optimus score being reduced if it doesn't have those features, like on the MSI GT77, for example. Now, for keyboard and mouse, I think I'm gonna break these categories into two separate categories. I haven't done that yet, but just know keyboard and mouse is 50% for the keyboard quality. Mouse is 50% for the trackpad. You want a large touchpad, glass texture, accurate tracking with Microsoft Precision drivers, and a solid tactile click feel. That's what makes a great mouse pad, in my opinion. So uh, a keyboard, I'm looking for a good typing experience, good spacing, good layout of the keys, and larger laptops especially are expected to have numpads and dedicated function keys like home end, page up, page down. Um, and good key backlighting is also crucial for high quality or high scores in the keyboard score. So if there's bad keyboard backlighting, it might be deducted by five or 10 points as well. Battery life, we need more battery tests to go on with this new generation of hardware. I'm currently estimating the battery based on the Intel CPU or AMD CPU plus the battery size. And the battery is gonna be, if it's a 10 hour or longer battery for moderate usage, it's gonna be a 100% rating. If it's less than that, it'll be like a one to 10 scale and that'll go straight to like if it's 50%, we should expect five hours of good moderate usage out of the battery you should be good to go. Um, so it's simple and easy to understand battery rating system. That's not too complex, but for right now, almost every gaming laptop has a battery life of moderate usage of less than 10 hours. So we'll have to see how that all rates out when we actually get to testing these new Ryzen laptops, which are even more power efficient. Maybe we'll actually go past 10 hours and we might have to adjust this rating system a bit more. Now for ports, 100% port ratings, means nine high quality ports, at least five total USB-A, C, and Thunderbolt 4 ports, ideally three USB-A's and two USB-C's with Thunderbolt 4 for both of them. Um, and we need USB-C power delivery, a full-size SD card slot, HDMI 2.1, a two and a half gigabit ethernet port, and a headset combo port. So that would be what a 100% a port rated system would be like on the GT77 or Razer Blade 18. Now, if they have a micro SD card slot, they do get half points for that slot. Um, so you get minus 10 for not having a full size, but they get five bonus points for having a micro. You get minus 10 off of the port score for each USB that is less than the five total. So if there's only four USBs total, then they get a minus 10 off of the ports score. Minus five for HDMI, uh, plus five for a mini display port. I think it's not as valuable as a USB-C port, uh, but it's still valuable, so there's a plus five there. Plus two and a half percent for a 3.5 millimeter headphone port, like on the XMG Neo series, and minus five percent for Thunderbolt, for not having Thunderbolt 4 support. So, um, that's how the port system is gonna be rated, but this is basically, I wanted full transparency on how we're gonna be doing the rating system on the sheet. And I'm gonna post this full, I'm gonna post this full rating system on a separate web page, which I'll link in the bottom of this video when I get it up. And when I get this a little more finalized, and it'll constantly be a work in progress and we'll constantly be tweaking the numbers on the sheet to make sure they're as accurate as possible. Um, so, let me check chat and see if you guys have any questions. Um, Fisherman says, I feel like not long ago I bought a new laptop, not long ago I asked you, Gizmo, that I wanted to swap my display from a 1080p to 1440p in my GE76 Raider, and I did it. I needed a new e display port cable. Cool. 
Are there any laptops over seven and a half pounds anymore? Yes, the Alienware M18 is 9.2 pounds. It's a big guy, big heavy thing, but there's not many of them. I think that's the only one over seven and a half pounds. Are there prices for new laptops? Well, we just added a new price for the Aorus 17X. It is $38.99 for a 4090, and you can buy it now. If you go to the sheet, uh, which should be linked down below, let me go ahead and show you that. Um, so popping over to the sheet, the Aura 17X. Um, if you go to the page along the bottom here is where all the buy links will be placed. And as we find more buy links, we're going to keep adding more and more links. So go over here. You can see the Gigabyte Aura 17X is now available for pre-order. It'll be released on February 8th. So have at it if this is one you're looking to get. I think this pricing is going to undercut... Um, the Blade and Asus laptops, but this might be pretty competitive with like the Strix G18 um, pricing, but that one only goes up to a 4080 anyway. So I don't know. This is going to be interesting to see all the pricing as we come. It's hard to say how great of a bang for buck this pricing is yet, but it's this isn't egregious pricing. It isn't as bad as what we've seen on some of the Razer leaked pricing. Um, so I'm curious. I'm curious. What do you guys think? Is this pricing way too crazy or is this not that bad? I don't know. I was kind of hoping for more like 3600 for this spec unit, but I'm sure we'll get there with sales later this year. Probably 3600 is very realistic for a sale. Um, popping over to chat again. What about XMG laptops? Why are they not listed? They are on the list. There's XMG laptops on the list. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, right here, XMG Neo 16 and 17. Kaboom. So go ahead and check that out. Um, I said something. Some, Brandon says GE6, GE78HX looks to be orderable on Amazon too. Super pricey though. Interesting. We'll have to, I'll have to look around for that. I've been looking on Amazon looking for listings after I found that. Or the After Lance sent me the or 17 x listing, I went and looked a bunch. I couldn't find any more. 40,000 or 4,000 series laptops, but Roman Favier says, Razer has their pricing and specs released. Is it, it is about what I expected. The mini LED is only available on the 490 option. That took me by surprise. Okay. Uh, we'll have to, I'll have to look those up and get all that information on there. If you've got links to where this information uh, came out, feel free to give it to me. But I know that certain, if it's just a leak, I don't know if I want to put it on the sheet necessarily because I want it to be official numbers from the brands or in officially listed stores because there's maybe scalpers trying to like upsell things or pre-sell things when they're not actually legitimately on sale. So could we reasonably expect 4070s or 4080s under 2,500? So there are 4070s confirmed to be uh, starting at around $1,500. Uh, the MSI Pulse 15 um, let me show you on the sheet here. So the Pulse 15, this one is going to start at 1449 for an RTX 4060. And uh, it looks really, prom I need to get all of these, um, I need to get the spacing figured out here, but um, you can see the pricing right here. Starts at 1449, 14. 99 for a QHD, but it's 1899 for the 4070 QHD version with an i9 processor. There is a 4070 version with the i7 processor and a full HD display. I believe that one's 1649. So I, 1649 is the cheapest 4070 I think we've seen officially confirmed by a brand so far. But there's definitely going to be 4070s that are going to be like around the 1500 to 16, 1700 dollar price point. That's where I expect a lot of the cheaper end laptops to start for that spec unit. Um, wish my laptop battery wasn't at 37 watt hours, had to buy a big battery pack just to make it through the school day. Gotcha. I am debating between XMG Neo just for the awesome thermals and support, but Blade 16 is insanely appealing thanks to its screen. I'm afraid of the battery problems. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be afraid of the battery problems. Razer extended their battery warranty to be like two or three years. Um, should be better now. Um, Roman Favier says it was from a Razor email. Okay, forward that email over to me, Roman, uh, at gizmoslip at gmail.com. I'll check it out. So 
So, Brandon, the links aren't going to work in chat because YouTube is like that. So, anyway, that's that's the stream for right now. I, I need to end this. I got to go to dinner with my parents coming up here. But I wanted to make it uh, transparent about how the review ratings are being put together for the sheet. And I'll be bringing you guys some videos very soon about top 10 gaming laptops for 2023 is going to be the next major video I put together. I think now that the rating system is done, I can, uh, I believe, fairly compare these laptops as best we can with the information we have right now. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's that's it for the stream. Thanks so much, guys. Hit the stream like button. I'll see you in the next one. Okay. Brandon out. Huzzah. <laughs>